I have never been acquainted with this culture. I feel like a tourist in my own country. In America, I was called Gary. Tala suomessa minu nimi oli velimatti. years since I was coming from Finland, back in Finland. Fifty years ago, the Teravinmi family consisted of a mother, a father, and eight children, forcing the family to be apart. After mother became sick, the children were taken to orphanages in Inari and Kitola, and some of us just were not allowed to have our biological parents, and this would last a lifetime. I've always wondered what life would have been like growing up in Ivalo. Most of my family are still in Ivalo, and when I visit there, I see Luli, Heiki, Veiko, Lisa, the family. Eikä me haluta muuta nimeälle ollenkaan. <laughs> Ei me muulla nimellä häntä tunnetakaan. Eikä hän ole ollut muu meille kuin veli Matti. Kyllä me tuossa isää näen aika paljon ja tuota, sitten tuota Liisaa ja Veikkoaan muistuttaa paljon. Ja en muista mitään nyt kuvista vain, että olen nähnyt kuvia siitä. My brother. <laughs> I'm a Finnish citizen and learning Finnish. When I went to America, my Finnish roots were taken from me by my new mother. I left America, but music is my life. I'm a songwriter and my stories are in my music. In Finland, I'm still doing music with uh, a band called Beautiful People. I know that what I ultimately try to do in life is, is leave something behind. You know, this is what Gary stood for. This is what he, what he was about. And I think that that's the most important thing to leave behind. I want to leave my mark. I became the singer in uh, a band called The Penetrators. We were in the first generation of punk rock musicians in the state of California. I've gotten a few fan letters. This is one that I always kept around from this woman. I said to him, Doctor, what's wrong with me? He said you're a corrupter, and just a little insane. Then he gave me a sedative, and he looked into my brain. When I drive to Ivalo from Rovaniemi, I feel like I'm returning back to the childhood that was stolen from me. Uh, all I have are the stories, uh, the stories that other people tell me about my life in Finland. 
And my life in America was much different than my brothers and sisters were told. My American mother made my life a nightmare. Silloin kun isä rakensi tähän, niin tuota, äiti oli siellä sairaalassa. Isällä oli hirveän raskasta. Meillä oli hevosia ja sitten pari lehmää. Miten hän on jaksanut? Kahdeksan oli vaan meidän, kun isällä oli työmaat, oli kaukana ja äiti sairastui, niin hän voinut huolehtia. Meitä oli niin iso liuta niitä kakaroita, niin eihän tuota niin, mahdottomuushan se oli. Joo, äiti oli Elsin, niin se oli, mikä on niitä synnytyksen jälkeen saattaa olla masentuneisuutta, semmoista jotakin tämmöistä, mitähän se oli. No se oli Popeda, se oli tällä Seikerillä sen merkkinen taksiko, Popeda merkkinen taksiauto ja se. Me nähtiin sitten, kun se auto tulla tupsahti sieltä tulen ajoa meidän pihalle ja se oli sen kunnan sosiaalisihteeri, joka oli siinä. Sen taksimiehen kanssa tuli hakemaan meitä. Oli varmaan isä niin tietoinen siitä ja vähän varotellut, että nyt ne tulee hakemaan teitä. Että no minä en lähde lasten kotiin, että niin minä lähdin karkuun sitten niitä eteenpäin juoksemaan sitten ja menin tuonne tien varteen juoksemaan yhden puun taakse piiloon. Ja... Me itkimme kaikki sinne käytävällä. Seisomme itkimme, meistä oli aivan hirviä se mm. tapaus. Siinä oli vielä yksi kolttapoika, semmoinen vähän meitä vanhempi, niin se juoksutti sen veikon kiinni sieltä jänkältä ja me mentiin sänkyjä alle piiloon. Sieltä ne sitten meidät otti ky- kyytiin siitä ja... Löivät sinne autoon ja lähettiin sinne riutulaan kohti. Isälläkään ei ollut minkäänlaista kuvaa velimatista, että kun, oliko hän nähnytkään, kato, kun se on Helsingissä käynyt äiti synnyttämässä sen, niin onko isä nähnytkään koko velimattia ikinä? That's something we don't know. We think that it was maybe one month. That that they took us directly from the hospital. In the 50s, American charities were touring Finnish orphanages. And an American author wrote about the Teravaniemi family in his book, Children of Calamity. I was told that we were found in a barn and with her, and that she had gone crazy because of the winter. The lapset oli yksin maailmassa siellä vanhempien hylkäämänä heinien päällä. Oliko joulukuvaus? Seimen lapset joulukuvaus. Heini lärkee kaukalon. But when I came here to meet my family, then we found out that that was all a lie. Me piti niinku suoraan lasten kodista nämä nuoremmat. Helena oli kolme ja hän on ollut ihan vauva. It was July the 6th and then August the 20th of that same year I turned four. So a little just under Uksikas Kolmen Nelja. Siellähän kävi aina sitten ne joka joulu se operaatio kulkunen. Tuolta Amerikasta nehän toi niitä joululahjoja sinne, kuille juuri lasten kotti. Joku kuvannut tuolla siitä porukasta noita Kittilän lasten koissa Helenaa ja Velimattia ja ihastuvat siihen Helenaan sitten. Se perhe, mikä oli nähnyt sen kuvan siellä lehissä. Americans read about the horrible conditions in the Finnish orphanages and wanted to adopt children from Finland. 
The social authorities in Lapland had a plan. At the same time that my mother got better and got out of the hospital and was reunited with the other children and they became a family again, the social authorities in Lapland had put Anneli into a new family and Helena and I were on our way to America. First off, Helena was the one that, that the family in America wanted to adopt. Ne olisi vaan halunnut adoptoida Helenan. Yeah. Ne he ei saaneet adoptoida vaan yhtä, mm. koska he oli sisaruksia. Mm. Ja heidän piti ottaa sen takia, on paljon, että veli on pidetty huonompana, niin kuin me kuullaan ainakin, mm. että häntä on pidetty huonompana. Although my father Oxley has said to the family many times that he never accepted the adoption, there still is the paperwork with his signature on it. And so it has caused conflict and confusion between the family. Isä väitti, se väitti ihan kuolemaan saakka ja viimeisen saakka sanoi, että hän ei ole ikinä suostumusta antanut, mutta miten se siinä, kun se, se nimikin oli yhdessä paperissa, kun Heikki näytti. No se oli, kun no, kotiolosuhteet parani ja äiti tervehtyi. Ja minä muistan, että meitä tuli kolme kotia ja sitten tuota, niin kuin vanhemmat sisarukset jäi opiskele, opiskelemaan sinne ja sitten näitä nuorempia asti vietiin ympäri maailmaa. Two children of calamity are coming to San Diego to begin a new life as American citizens. Two doll-like blonde children, both with China blue eyes, came from Finland yesterday. But if Helena, five, or Gary, four, were frightened or homesick, they bore it with steady calmness that was more moving than tears. There was lovely little Helena hugging the doll sent by her American sponsor. My first vision of America is waking up on, like this in a child's chair. And I had a, a belt strapped around me. They can say mama and daddy, said Mrs. Heffern. We'll just give them plenty of love and that should be enough. You know, I was only used to finish food, basically potatoes. And she had the two sisters watch. And, you know, she beat me and tied me into the chair. And then I fell off to the side. We've waited for nearly a year now, but they've waited all their lives, Mrs. Heffern said yesterday. We're all ready for them now. And then, you know, and I was throwing up and then she pulled the chair back up. And it's a little child's chair, you know, with a little tray. And then she put the vomit on the tray and gave me a spoon and made me eat it. I have learned to say a few things in Finnish, like, are you hungry? Onko sinulla nalka, she added. We're going to call the little boy Gary Matthew. Gary is an old family name, and Matthew means gift of God, you know. Gift of God seems to be true for us. In Finland, life went on as a normal family. The Heffern sent photos to Finland, but all of the letters that were sent to America from Finland came back to Finland unopened. So we were completely isolated from our family. My pass was denied, and I was told that uh, Finnish people were liars, greedy, and evil. I coped with the trauma that my mother had given me by going to see a psychiatrist, and that lasted for many years. Obviously, I, I went into drugs and all that, but that chapter of my life has been closed for many, many years.
Let's kick some ass. Hello. Otis and Gary. Hey, nice man. Meet you, man. Gary. Yeah. Nice to meet you, man. Oh. Hey, man, have a good one. would do but what she would make me do first was I had to get down and I would have to walk like this this is the way I'd walk back and forth on that tile floor no I, it, the hands had to be up and if the hands fell down or if I was trying to go like this then I would she would be you know with a like a, a meter yardstick is what we called them and just whew. I didn't speak the language so I couldn't deny anything. I was just, I, I, no, no, hey, 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 you know? And this is very embarrassing. She would whip us and, until we bled, and then it wasn't a good beating unless you got blood. And it would happen two or three times a week. I, I can't remember if it was either Helena or me, but one of us had done something, and Marion had a big tub like this. So she filled it with water, and she would just hold our heads under the water. And, the, and there was one other time when I got into trouble at school, I told a girl, bad thing. Bam, bam, bam. And then my dad came home and she told him, and it was just like maybe a couple hours later, and he took me into the bedroom and he had his belt off, ready to, to, to beat me. And so I, you know, just pulled out my pants because I'm getting ready, you know, here we go again. And he looked down and he saw my ass, and he was like, did your, did your mom already beat you? Have you already been whipped? I said, yeah. And, I mean, of course, there was blood. I mean, this was probably the closest moment I ever had with him. And I remember him kind of just looking at me in shock. And then he said, stand over here. And he took his belt and he just started beating on the bed, just hitting the bed. And he told me, scream every time I hit. Scream. Hit scream and without him hitting me he never knew about any of these beatings well i'm sure there was some shame or you know that he was married to a monster that could actually do something like that my american mother hated the fact that i found escape in music I had like all these albums, like Blues Magoos, 13th Floor Elevators, about 50 albums. And they went in and they went to the fireplace and they broke all the records. So though they had me break the records and then they burned all the, all the covers. From San Diego, I moved north to Seattle and got married was working, got divorced. I am so honored to have that and just, uh, it reminds me of when I was a kid. We grew up in fear. So growing up was constantly looking over my shoulder, trying to be careful not to upset anything or anybody and, you know, just trying to get through. I don't trust a lot of people. I don't, unfortunately, and I, that's a really sad thing. You know, life was pretty normal then, but I still had uh, so many questions about Finland. It haunted me, and I needed to know the truth. 
I knew a man who was happy. He never cried. He just thought of rivers, and he was so bland. He married a woman. She swung like a gate, opening and closing everything she could, 'cause it felt so good. One day she looked at him. She said, "Jim, let's move out of here. Let's move to the city." And the rains came, and they brought them a child. And the man learned to hate, and the woman learned to fear, and the child learned to bring out the worst in both of them. And the rivers turned to tears. One day. I received a phone call from uh, the Tervaniemis in Finland, and it was my brother Heikki. And he said to me that everything you know about the family in Finland is a lie. And I was in shock, and I knew I just had to come back to Finland. <laughs> Ja Helena. Se oli niin liikuttava. Me oltiin niin jännissään ja me seisottiin kaikki sinne Akujärven koulun pihalla ihana kesäpäivä ja, ja oltiin jännissään. Ne tuli autosta sitten ja tuota... Hei Veli-Matti, hei! Tervetuloa! Tervetuloa! Rakas sisko ja veli. Dear sister and brother. Helena ja veli Matti. Olemme odottaneet tätä hetkeä niin kauan. We have waited this moment so long. Nyt viidon, kun olemme saaneet tehdä tänne. When you let me... Toivomme, että tämä tapahtuminen ei jää ainoaksi. When you now arrive to here, we hope that this is not only time we are going to meet. Nyt kun olemme kaikki kahdeksan sisarusta yhdessä. And when we all eight sister, sisters are together. We all, you could just feel it. It was so omnipresent and overwhelming. When you feel absolute love. So we have a great time. We got to get out of routine. I have not been to Kitala for 52 years, and I know that the orphanage is gone, but um, I don't know, I just have to go there and see, see what's there. much. I recognize these, these trees, these kind of trees. This is where the orphanage was, right? All I remember was the snow and then there being a hill and that we would slide down in our sleds and we had little blue and red plastic suits that we had to wear. But it seemed so much bigger than this. You know, I thought it would be like when we were up on the mountain up there. As soon as I saw these trees when I was coming, it was just like... <sighs> Pretty overwhelming.
I wrote this um, just before my mother died. She had the Alzheimer's. She had spent three days in her house and just crying the whole time. I just held her hand and I told her that, uh, you know, I forgive you. I forgive you for everything you've done. You don't have to cry. The roles were reversed. You know, she was, she was the child. And then I was, I was the parent. And if, if I was a parent, you know, I would never treat a, a child that way. And My mother is dying, and there's nothing I can do. And when she weeps, it kills me inside. Now, it may sound cruel, because I know that she's a battle. But Ma, it's all right to give up, because it's an ugly fight. And she's in La La Land. She's in La La Land. She's in La La Land. She can't come. And Ma, we all love you And hate to see you this way Just remember good thoughts And let the rest go And now it may seem foolish I wish it was me Cause Ma I'd give up And set myself free And when she died, you know, I was very angry with her because she, she was the only person that knew the answers about Finland. I don't feel myself an American Finnish, Lapish, or Sami, um, it takes a while. And I still wonder what, uh, you know, Velimati Teravaniemi would be doing now in his life if he would have stayed here in Finland.